Hi, my name is Allison Tiemann, and I'm the founder of Honey Badger Radio. After I recorded my last announcement of the ICMI fundraiser and ticket drive, I found out that the judge is going to be issuing the costs, the costs that I have to pay for... okay. The judge is going to be delivering his judgment on the costs that I'm going to have to pay for attempting to assert my contractual rights in Canada. I swear to God, these cats, they choose the most interesting times to pay attention to me. For those of you who don't know, in 2015, I was, I'm a comics creator, and I also create, of course, Honey Badger Radio. We were going to have a booth. I was kicked out. It was basically because I pissed off a bunch of mean girls, mean girl feminists, by saying that we should bring men into the equation. You're just not going to let me do this, are you? Okay, buds, I got to, you're going to have to go in the other room if you're not going to let me finish this, Okay. Sorry. All right. I know you want detention, but you're going to have to let me finish this. All right. I'll give you one last chance. One last chance. Okay. In 2015, I was kicked out of the Calgary Expo for speaking up at a panel, panel called Women Into Comics when feminists said, well, why don't men's rights activists want us to have control over geek and gamer spaces? And in response to that, I said, okay, all right, this is not going to work. All right. In 2015, I was kicked out of the Calgary Comics and Entertainment Expo. I was kicked out because I spoke up when a group of feminists at a panel called Women Into Comics started talking about, well, why do men's rights activists not want us in geek and gamer spaces? And I said, well, the reason why is because you make victim women out to be victims of these spaces and you need to bring men into the equation because not only for men's sake, but also to challenge the notion that women are defined as victims. And for that, I was summarily evicted from that space. And then the Mary Sue proceeded to lie about why I was evicted, covering the expo's ass. I took them to court, which was basically taking them to court for a refund and to cover the costs of the eviction. And I lost. The judge ruled for the defendant even though the defendant violated their contract with me and failed to abide by its terms, they re he ruled for the defendant. And now I'm facing the costs of standing up for my right as a Canadian citizen to consumer protection and contract law, to have my contracts, to, to have contracts with me upheld. And I don't know what the cost of that's going to be. The defendants have asked for a quarter of a million it's civil court, so if the judge awards them anywhere near that, it, it'll be unheard of in the history of civil court. But who knows? The judge does not particularly like me. That's patently obvious. And so right now I'm facing that. He wants to deliver his judgment orally, not written, so we have to arrange for that. And I will tell you all what it is when I receive that. But I'm facing that now and also a potential loss of twenty to $40,000 on the International Conference on Men's Issues, which, you know, I took on because there has to be something that good that comes out of this. There has to be something good that comes out of this. <clears throat> I will fight to bring attention to these issues no matter what 
I'll fight to create a space to talk about men's issues, no matter what. I'm really fucking scared. At this point, I can't back out of anything, so it is what it is. But if you want to make sure that the ICMI is a success, you can go and get a ticket. You can go and choose a sponsorship option. And again, I'll keep you posted on what the costs actually are. All right, I have to take that. 16 paranoia filled days later. All right, I'm back. That wasn't the judge issuing costs, it was actually an unrelated phone call. I haven't been able to get back to this particular issue for three weeks because I've been so very, very, very busy. Essentially, I was informed the judge was ready to issue costs the day I started the fundraiser for the ICMI. <laughs> Talk about when it rains, it pours, and incredibly bad timing. Maybe I'll do, you know, when, when the judge issues costs, maybe I'll consider doing what Dankula did or attempted to do and just tell them to go fuck themselves, I'm not paying. But, you know, that might not be the best approach because I might ruin my credit and be unable to do something like an ICMI again. Oh, man. Okay, so. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I ran afoul in 2015 of a bunch of mean girls using the narrative that geek and gamer spaces want to keep women out in order to, for those aforementioned mean girls to gain control over one of those spaces namely the calgary expo because they called them out in the mildest and most canadian sense of the term calling out they decided to kick a woman me out of a geek and gamer space in the name of supporting women in geek and gamers you know it, it makes perfect sense to hypocrites. Then their friends at the Mary Sue lied about why they kicked me out, saying I had misrepresented myself on my contract with the venue when I did no such thing. And they, in their defense, even submitted the contract in which I had not misrepresented myself. I decided to sue for, at the very least, a refund for the booth space I bought and the tickets that I bought. After three years of listening to clown music, I mean literally, the defendants played clown music during our first teleconference court appearance, enduring their attorney's repeated threats, including a threat of countersuing for defamation over a three or two word tweet. Their perpetual obstructionism, their own admission after firing their attorney that he engaged in said obstructionism in order to milk them from fees, their attorney actually being reprimanded by the judge for forwarding communication, unlawful communication from his client that in the judge's own words constituted slagging off the plaintiff. After all that, the judge decided the fact that I signed a contract with them gave them the right to break it. I shit you not. The fact I signed a contract with them gave them the right to break it. At least that's what his reasoning appears to be. No one can know for sure. Because in a completely novel interpretation of what it means to issue a judgment, the judge didn't reference any actual law to support his judgment. It was basically an opinion piece. And now I'm going to get his opinion on how much I need to pay for the crime of trying to protect my consumer and contract rights in a Canadian civil court. <sighs> of course, this opinion is its going to come with a cost attached. The upshot of this is that I have gotten an education on what consumer protection and civil rights really mean. They mean shit if the government doesn't like you, or the media doesn't like you, or feminists in an organization don't like you. And if this tribalist shit is what feminists do when they get any power, they don't have the right to say they advocate for women and or minorities and use that as a moral bludgeon to beat everyone else in line with. They're just a bunch of con artists who are using people's desire to protect and provide for women in order to gain power for themselves via a hypocritical and self-negating narrative that everywhere they aren't hates women. Oh, 
Society hates women. Geek and Gamer Spaces hate women. You hate women. Give us control over your life and lots of money, and we'll make sure that you don't hate women. It's like selling modern-day indulgences. If you don't know what those are, the Catholic Church used to sell transport from pur purgatory or hell into heaven for deceased people to the loved ones they left behind. So regardless, when I received that phone call, I was a little frazzled. Fuck me. Anyway, here's some comments I wanted to respond to from the original fundraiser vid I did three weeks ago. Mark Austin says, Okay, woman, the thing you need to keep in mind here is that even if the whole thing is the worst disaster it can be, you can never fail us. All that will happen is you expose another part of life where the system will throw out its own rules to bring down a men's rights activist group, which is what Canada did in your case. Ignored a core business principle just to make sure you lose the case. Scaring that bird out of the bush for all of us to see was probably the best kind of win. If crap hits the fan, HBR is its people, filming from pantries or kitchens or not. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mark. Anon says, Selecting an option and clicking next with option selected returns, Your cart is currently empty. Yes, I know. There was a total fatal plug-in bug meltdown that wasn't allowing fundraiser levels to be placed into the cart. I have since got a workaround from the plugin developers, so if you did try to give us some funds in the first part of this fundraiser and were unable to, please give it a go again. Let it not be said that we do not want the people who support us to be persistent and stubborn. Monique Deverost says, You inspire me, Allison. I am brave and speak loudly because of you. You have helped many others from committing suicide, and you have already made such a difference. You've already succeeded. Thank you, Monique. Reason Vision says, Whoa, whoa, let's take it easy. If you think it's best for you, of course, but we'll miss you. Obviously not that that should be a factor in you deciding to stay, Sorry, I couldn't phrase this right. I'm not going anywhere, Reason Vision. Don't worry. Just watch the whole video. You'll see where, where I was coming from with that. X-Men says, Yeah. Has the Honey Badgers tried to set up a fundraiser for DV shelters or prostate cancer? This would help, because as time passes, people are going to grow tired of the same old shit. This is why we're in the position we're in now. It's not edgy or breathtaking to watch women say men have issues that need to be addressed anymore. Social commentaries were a good start. Now it's time to move forward with projects and activities. The men's liberation movement failed to do it, and they died off. The mythopoetic men's movement failed to do this, and they died off. MGTOW is failing to do this, which is why they're not the number one men's movement right now. Honey Badgers is falling down that same path, and it's sad. You're wasting your life getting slandered, harassed, threatened, just so that you can make a YouTube channel. You girls need to come to a conclusion that you can do better and will do better, because eventually men are going to get tired of donating money out of their paychecks to keep this alive. We want results, not empty words. I don't understand this criticism. You want us to move forward with projects and activities. On a video where we're fundraising for a convention that we're hosting. Does that not qualify as a project and or activity? Also, we continue to exist. That's results. Maggi Alpha one says, just sent a donation. Good work, Allison. <laughs> Thank you, Magic Alpha one Callum McKenzie says, your cat is so cute. And if it's named Khajiit, that's even better. No, he is not. He is named Simon. He is an assassin, and I mean that very literally. Gilhez says, This feels like such a losing battle. Social justice warrior activists organize in any number of ways, and everywhere they turn, endless amounts of support are thrown their way. The mainstream media reports favorably on them, regardless of whether they are actually doing something charitable and worthwhile, or if they are behaving monstrously and against everything they say they represent. Like assaulting people with bike locks, for example. Large corporations and international foundations trample over themselves to show support for their causes, to the tune of billions of dollars in donations every year. 
Companies can't paint their logos with rainbow colors or pink fast enough during Pride Month and Breast Cancer Awareness Month, respectively. And even in the absence of other financial support, they have at their disposal every new technological innovation, like crowdfunding and Patreon. A few years ago, it felt like there was a great momentum for anti-social justice warrior and anti-feminist content online. But then 2016 happened, and now every tech giant has vowed to purge social media from non-progressive content creators to stop a Trump situation, to quote from Project Veritas, from ever happening again. So what do you do when you can't even host an event on a private venue because said venue gets bomb threats and administrators are threatened with reputational destruction over hosting it? Or when you can't even set up a small club in a college campus without invoking the fury of the college bureaucracy, the academic activists, and the media who will do everything to snuff the life out of even the attempt to do it? Calling this an asymmetrical battle would be the understatement of the century. Yes, it is an asymmetrical battle. Not just that, but we're battling to keep our opponents from essentially chopping a hole in the bottom of the boat that keeps us all alive, including them. (laughs) Stop stop doing that. Oh, you're just a fascist who hates water. (sighs) (laughs) But anyway, I have a plan. I'll be talking about the plan at the International Conference on Men's Issues. Now with bonus Badger content. Uh, If you want to support that, go to feedthebadger.com and choose a remote option. All right, shill over. Okay, Tag says, I wonder, did you consider offering digital tickets? In the past, presentations were taped and released to the public over weeks and months. Owners of a digital ticket could get preferential access to that footage, maybe even access to a live stream from the venue. I simply can't afford the international travel, but a digital ticket would be a no-brainer for me. And given that Sargon and Dank are on your roster, you have a product to offer to their men's issues adjacent audience. We actually are offering digital tickets through our fundraiser, so you can go check that out. We have archives, you can have access to the live stream archives, you can have access to the live streams as they are happening and participate in the Q&A for each day or one day if you only have time for one day. And you can also help us sponsor volunteers, sponsor a speaker, lots of different options to purchase a product created by the ICMI. So go to feedthebadger.com, select an option and put, put, you know, help us out. Help us make this, this the best ICMI yet. Gatto Valino says, I don't know if you have noticed, but there is a certain behavioral pattern here. With the court case, you gambled everything you had, not once, but twice, and each time you came close to financial ruin. Now you are willing to gamble everything you have for a single event. You know, there's help available. There are hotlines you can call. There are professionals who specialize in treating compulsive gambling. My grandfather had this pathology as well. He nearly lost everything he had. But remember, you are not alone. Your friends can help you through this. This has to be the most unique criticism I've ever received. So thank you for that, Gato. It got, it got the, uh, the walnuts percolating. Now I'm going to turn your question around on you. What are you gambling on? Because you are taking a gamble, even though you probably don't think you are. As I explained multiple times, our society has currently selected its method of self-termination. The narrative that it itself is a tool of oppression towards women. This is the kind of narrative you embrace when you want to destroy something. It's war propaganda, basically. Society has loaded a gun, put the muzzle under its chin, and is now fingering the trigger. There is no future in that. Our society has a lot of ballast and inertia, so it will take a while for the full effect of that bullet ricocheting through its skull to be felt. But it will be felt. What you're gambling on is that somehow none of this is happening. Every empire in human history has fallen. Every civilization has imploded. It's possible we could be the one that doesn't, but certainly not if we're going to yell an insanely suicidal narrative like society hates women louder and louder from taller and taller pulpits. Everything I'm gambling, gambling with is ultimately meaningless unless we preserve the social structures that give it meaning. Money is worthless. Property is nothing. If we can't stop that narrative, we're doomed. I'm gambling on doing something. You're gambling on doing nothing. That's fine. It's your choice to gamble. But you know, maybe your friends can help you with that problem. 
Thank you. Robert Paulson says, What is your strategy for teaching the rest of the fleet to come about? As far as I can see, your lone vessel leading by demonstration has made little progress on that front. What would a positive result of this conference look like? Growth in membership? To what end? How large of a change in metrics will we need to see before this phase of the strategy is successful? This is something I'm struggling with when it comes to some of these criticisms. What's the alternative to being a lone vessel leading by demonstration? Not doing it? Somebody has to be that first lone vessel. We're demonstrating that we're able to build and care about men. And that will ultimately neutralize the negative sum game, the aforementioned suicidal narrative. Everyone who's compulsively following the winds of female victimhood, promoting this suicidal narrative that society hates women in order to keep those winds blowing, is going to endure ever increasing levels of pain and destruction because it's suicidal. There's one thing that I got out of the innumerable sales books, specifically the book Crossing the Chasm. You don't actually sell a product. I mean, the people who create the product don't sell it. They identify the pain it solves. I've already identified the pain that this product solves. Just have to wait for the pain to be sufficient that people decide that they want it. We don't need to convince them of anything. The inevitable suffering their chosen course brings will do it for us. We just need to demonstrate that we can come together and be motivated by something other than female victimhood. I don't know how large a change in metrics we have to see, but I do know this. We are creating a community of people who care about men. We're doing this infinitely better than everyone else who isn't creating a community that cares about men. Kazen Kitty says, what is you and your friends spending one weekend at a nice hotel at the expense of your patrons and other fools going to do for men's rights? In response, P.H. Oslo says, they are organizing the event. You think they should do more while they're there? What standards do you hold yourself to when you expect that much from others? Kazen Kitty replies, I'm asking what she's organizing this event for. What is this event going to achieve? Her video has not explained this. I've watched the video in its entirety. The International Conference on Men's Issues is going to achieve what all of these types of events achieve, building a community that cares about men, creating a network of opportunities for organization that, organizations that promote services for men, both with each other and with potential donors, raising our profile with the press, raising awareness of these issues we care about, and building inroads with local businesses in Chicago. The budget for this event is on the fundraiser, and it has been since the beginning. I have publicly stated what the money is for. Yes, the volunteers and committee members providing the labor to put on the event will be staying at the hotel adjacent to the venue so that they can do their jobs running the event. I'm not telling you which businesses we're approaching. First of all, that stage is done, and we have our contract signed. Second of all, I don't want you harassing them. Kazen Kitty asks... Who are these feminists who don't have empathy for male victims? How about the feminists who are trying to block the International Conference for Men's Issues from even happening? How about those feminists? Anyway, any feminist who promotes male-blaming conjecture about reality based on a premise that has never been proven true and has, in fact, been debunked by its own adherents several times. Patriarchy conjecture, the idea that we live in a society that chooses to privilege men over women, has never been subject to any kind of scientific rigor. Therefore, it cannot be asserted as a fact. Further, its adherents have created studies in which they make predictions based on patriarchy conjecture, and these predictions are invariably proven false. And the scientific establishment has never said, wait, what? Because we don't live in a society that wants to privilege men over women, we live in a society that wants to protect and provide for women, to the exclusion of men in many cases, and wants to justify that exclusive focus on women, on women's benefit, by pretending we live in a society that privileges men over women. Your hateful belief is both hateful and unfounded. It contributes to an epidemic of men who feel like they are nothing but a burden on society, and as a result, when they fail along any metric, be it relationships or employment, they kill themselves. I have explained this 
multiple times to many, many, many feminists, and they do not care. They would rather continue to be seen as right than stop contributing to the deaths of men. As such, I no longer take responsibility for your moral failings as a feminist. If you refuse to listen to what I'm saying, if you refuse to let that penetrate, then let it be on your head and on your soul. Memon Magazine says, 15K is a joke in comparison to Anita Sarkeesian's Kickstarters, i.e. there should be at least one rich man dropping a huge part of it. Nope. Rich men don't like us. They like feminism because they are the patriarchy. John E. writes, Thanks for the poetry, but here comes the truth. The second biggest problem with Western civilization is its lack of propensity to undo, reverse its own mistakes. The words change, move forward, progress, etc. resonate as positive notions in our consciousness. Consequently, we often create one problem to solve another. For example, Feminism falsely claimed that women are oppressed victims. Instead of fighting to diminish that narrative, if at all possible, the men's rights movement is counterclaiming that men are also victims. And so, the victimhood culture is all but opposed, while the division is intensified. Who wins? There is no easy way to explain this, but whatever is going on in the fight for men's rights issues does more harm to society than good. How do we challenge the notion that women are victims without presenting the context? This isn't a situation in which men are a random group of people. The notion that women are victims is based on the idea that men are not. The only way to challenge it, the idea that women are victims, is to recognize where men are making sacrifices for society, either through their choice or because society is forcing them or because society isn't caring about the issues that they face. If you don't bring up this context, we'll just continue to believe that society is oppressing women in order to benefit men which will eventually kill our society. Also, the assumption is that women, upon recognizing men's vulnerability, will on the whole respond with more conflict and anger. I'm not arguing that many or even most women won't do that. I don't see why that's a reason not to talk about issues that verifiably face men, but okay. But ultimately, you don't need a whole lot of women who have sympathy and compassion for men. Those women who do have sympathy just have to make the men in their community more competitive than any other group of men. And history proves that they have and do. Yes, gynocentrism is a thing. It's something we may never get rid of, but it doesn't matter because gynocentrisms compete. And the axis they compete along, whether they acknowledge it or not, is the productivity of their men. And the productivity of their men is directly proportional to the psychological foundation built by their women. When men matter, they reward their communities with inspired effort. When they don't, they shut down, they check out, and they lash out. Take Down MRAs says, Got banned from your venue? No need to thank me. Begging for money because you can't sell tickets? Keynote speaker is a failed wannabe politician famous for teaching his dog Nazi salutes. Biggest success ever. So you got our original venue to drop us, is that what you're saying? I don't think so, but I wouldn't brag about that publicly. Particularly since you complain about us going on the internet to complain about feminists and doing nothing in the real world. Well, when we do something in the real world, feminists like you try to get it shut down. Sometimes successfully. You are literally punching me in the face and then accusing me of... <sighs> ...being mean to you. Because I'm bleeding from you punching me in the face. Also, this isn't begging for money because we can't sell tickets. Our crowdfunder is for tickets and other products of the ICMI. It's more like a sales drive than a fundraiser. All right, so talking to all of you guys, do you want me to try? Originally, I said that the shortfall was gonna be between 30 to 40K. We're pretty close to 30K now. I think we're, around uh, just under 3,000 to get there. Do you guys want me to try for the full 40K? So continue the sales drive until we hit 40K to cover the entire deficit. And incidentally, one of the reasons why I nearly didn't do this is because the, the individuals responsible for Mythicist, I had a conversation with them before I did this convention because I wanted to find out what it was that you would need to do to do a convention. And they suggested to me that we should have everything fundraised before we do the convention. 
uh, like as which would have been something like a hundred thousand and I was like whoa really that's one of the reasons why I got cold feet so fundraising for a convention is actually very standard and usually a lot of different conventions they fundraise the entire amount before they even try it I decided not go that route yeah maybe I'm a bit of a gambler maybe I figured that you know we would make the ticket sales but I always figured that we'd also have to do a supplementary fundraiser for or sales drive for remote tickets as well but anyway my question to you is do you want me to go for the full 40,000 once we hit 30,000 or should we just cap it off at 30,000 and uh, yeah uh, thank you for your support if you do want to help make this the biggest success possible and just so you know anything over and above the expenses of the ICMI will go towards future events either physical or virtual future ba badger meetups future badger conventions maybe a future ICMI if that's in the cards so you know it's it if, if we do make if we do make over our projected expenses we'll be sure to give back to the community with another event and uh, if you want to support it, www.feedthebadger.com. Like I said before, there are some wonderful options. There are archives of the live stream. There are live live stream access for one day, three days. There is great swag if you can get if you if you if you purchase the the shipping options. And you can also sponsor volunteers, sponsor a speaker, so you could have your your name. Like on a on a badge of a speaker like Sargon sponsored by although I think you already got like a top sponsor so but anyway go to feedthebadger.com and do help this out and let's do this um, as for the the costs for the lawsuit I will try to kick that can as far down the road as possible I talked to the lawyer our current lawyer uh, law, law firm and. They essentially said there is a bit of a rigmarole. The defendants have to contact the bailiff in my area before they can collect. So I'll do my best to push that as far away from this fundraiser as possible. Or maybe I just won't pay and let them take me to jail. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, um, I'll keep you abreast to that. And I promise I will do a venue reveal or a partial venue reveal very very soon and also if we do make the 40,000 I got a, a really special special content that will be made available for that so www.feedthebadger.com let's make this project the very best we can and then then we'll deal with every other thing on the back burner like the court costs so thank you for your kind attention and have a good evening